Okay, so before we get started with the camera, we need to uh, fix it onto a tripod. Now, it's quite a heavy camera, so you need to use something sturdy. We recommend certainly metal, not plastic tripods. Uh, so, base plate screws onto the bottom. Make sure it's nice and tight and won't budge. And make sure you've got a sturdy tripod. Fix it into, like so. Okay, so this is the large format camera. We've got it securely attached to the tripod. Um, so the first thing we need to do in order to open the camera up is to unscrew these two wheels at the back of the camera. And they're gonna turn anti-clockwise from the body. So that one like that, this one like that. And then the next thing to do to release it is to push this button on the front. That will allow us to take the camera up to a 90 degree point. And then of course, straight away, tighten these up this time clockwise on both sides. Okay, so once you've got it open, you need to check that these bellows are loose and moving back and forward, and that should be by these screws here. Make sure those are loose. You need to pull it forward a bit and then you can take it up so it's loose it'll be tucked in when you open it up it'll be loose so you bring it forward and then you can just lift it all the way up to tighten these two off now the standard position to, to secure it you'll notice there is a small red dot just here and the idea is that you just hide that red dot and then at that point you can tighten up the two dials on the side and that is your standard level position for for the correct, the correct standard position for the bellows for where the lens will then sit. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to lock this plate so that it stays vertical and doesn't fall forward. And to do that, once it's pushed all the way up, we're just going to take these two levers on the side, just push those up vertically, and then that plate will be fixed in a vertical position. Okay, so now we need to extend the bellows, um, and that is done by just pulling at this plate at the bottom by this little lever, just like that. Uh, the extent to which you extend the bellows will be determined by your lens on the scale which is at the bottom here. Once you've got it to the desired length, you can then just take this lever to the left or the right to lock it off like that, and then the bellows won't be able to go back or forth. Okay, so this is the lens that comes on the, in on this plate. Um, it's very delicate. There's a cap on each end. So we're going to take off the inner cap. And then we're going to slide the lens in, uh, slide the bottom of the plate into these two clasps here. And then push it up to the top and slide this lock down over the top of it. And that should then be nice and secure. Okay, so, um, so with this large format camera, all of the shutter um, adjustments are controlled within the lens. Um, so you've taken your reading for your picture, you've got your aperture control on the top here. And on this lens it goes from 6.8 all the way to 45, that's your F number. You have your shutter speed control is here by this dial and that red arrow and that goes from 500th of a second all the way down to one second and you've also got bulb which you'll probably know is the time that you hold the shutter open for and you've got T for time um, which is you press it once to open it press it again to close it that's if you, so I suppose that's for if you're doing uh, very long exposures uh, so once you've got your shutter speed and aperture set you then need to cock the shutter and that's done by pushing this lever over and then to release the shutter is the switch down on this side just like that um, 
you can attach a cable release to this camera, which is what the screw above here is. So you can push that over, a cable release can screw into there, and then that will push the shutter down. Uh, a very important switch for the large format camera is this switch on the side. And what this does when you push it up and down is to allow light, it opens the lens. So when it's up, the lens is open, you have that red light which acts as a kind of warning to say that it's open, that light is coming into the camera. You need to do this so that you can adjust and focus the picture on the back, on the plate, which is on the back of the camera. Uh, once you've done that and you're ready to take your picture, you then need to close the lens again. And you need to remember to do that, otherwise you will risk exposing your, exposing your film unnecessarily. So it's just up to open and down to close. To use a cable release, you're going to attach it to this little screw just above the shutter release. So it just goes in there. It's a bit fiddly. Then that will hold in place. And then once you've got your shutter cocked, you can push the other end of the cable. Just like that. The reasons that you would use cable release are to, uh, I suppose, primarily to reduce camera shake because you're instead of you know, worrying about sort of knocking the body or something, you're, you're standing back. Um, because you're standing back, you have the opportunity to uh, engage or concentrate with your subjects. Also, you might want to use it to avoid um, yourself kind of you know, getting in front of the lens or, um, or blocking any lighting that you have set up, blocking any lighting onto your subjects. Um, so the function of the cable release is very simple. Once you've screwed it into that uh, fixing there to push down the shutter, you then simply push the button on the top that wire comes out, um, and then to release it again, you push this outer ring, push that down, and that button will pop up again. So push it down, and then like so. There is another function um, if you twist this outer ring, and there we go, screw it around, and then it will act as a kind of a toggle. So rather than having to reset it, you can just push it once like that. Just to show you this again, uh, up close, so to push the button down and the switch will stay and then it's the outer release here, which if I push that down, I'll pop it out, so I'll do that again. And then the alternative function is to twist that around to the right like that and then it's on a toggle and it will just spring back. Okay, so the camera is now fully set up um, and we're now at the stage where we're ready to start uh, preparing to make exposures. Um, so we're going to take the lens cap off. We're also going to open the lens um, with the switch on the side up so that the red dot is showing. And as well as that, I'm going to open the aperture to its, uh, to its widest, to the smallest F number, so that we have the maximum amount of light coming through the camera. We need that light so that we can use the, uh, so that we can focus the image on the back, on the plate at the back. Um, so there's two ways of looking at this. You can use the inbuilt hood just by pushing that switch down and the inbuilt hood will open up uh, in there. And so you can then you know, get down to that and start seeing the, uh, seeing the image on that screen to focus. Uh, you don't have to use that. You can just simply open up the door and this might give you a bit more space. Okay, and to take off the door, you just put the door to 90 degrees from the camera, and then you can just simply just push it down. The catch at the release will come out, and then you can just take it away from the bottom one. It's a spring on the bottom, and it's fixed on the top. So it springs into the bottom like that, and then pops up. It won't work when it's fully open because of this area here. It must be at 90 degrees, so you just push down and release like that. Okay, so at this point we now need to compose and focus our image on the screen at the back. Um, so for this we're going to use a hood and a focusing loop. So I need to get under the hood and I need to take my loop with me. That. This should give you an idea of what it looks like once you're under the hood. Uh, you'll notice that I'm upside down, we all know why that is. Um, you'll also notice that there are grids. There's kind of lines like a grid on the back of the plate. This you can use to help with your composition. 
Most importantly, what you must do under here is use your focusing loop to make sure that your subject is in focus. And it's very important because after this stage, there won't be another chance to check. Once you've made your focus, and you must check that around all four corners of the image, you will then not be able to move the camera and you will not be able to move the subject because the film will then replace this plate and you won't be able to see what your image is going to be on. Once you're under the hood and you're uh, looking at the back of the screen with your loop, to adjust the focus you use these two dials here and you're just going to twizzle those backwards and forwards and you'll see that it moves the lens backwards and forwards and therefore adjusts your focus. Now to lock it off once you've got it into the desired position and you don't want to disturb it you can use this small lever here and that will therefore lock those dials. They can still move a bit so make sure that you're not forcing it, make sure that is free when you are adjusting, it should move quite freely. At present this is set up in, uh, in landscape, it can do portrait as well, in order to do that we just need to rotate the back plate and we do that by pushing this button here on the side and then back plate can rotate to there into portrait and then simply again to put it back just push the button start to rotate you can release it then and all the way back it's a bit stiff in close up to rotate the back it's this small button here push it to start the rotating you can then release it all the way that's into portrait so again push, start to rotate and you can let go and finish off. There we go. Okay, so we've now composed and focused our image. Um, it's very important now that we don't move the subject and that we don't move the camera because we won't have the opportunity again to see once we put the film holder in. Um, so before we put the film holder in, we need to make sure that the lens is closed because we will have had it open to, be, to do our, our focusing on the back. So we need to make sure it's closed so that we don't expose the film unnecessarily. Back around to the back. Um, in order to open the back up, we're going to use this lever here, which is on the side of the back plate. It's on the top at the moment in landscape. If you rotate it, it will be on the, on the right-hand side here. It basically, it rotates with the plate. Okay, so open that up like so, and you'll notice that it then presents you with this gap here, which is where we're going to slot the film holder into, like that. It's a little bit stiff, but it should go in all the way, and it will square off. When we then, we then need to take the lever back down, so the film holder is held snugly in place with the camera. And because of the pressure of the springs, this film holder will now be pressed up tight against the camera and won't allow any light in. So you're now ready to take an exposure. Once you've uh, got your readings from the light meter, and you've adjusted those settings on the lens so that everything is ready to go for the exposure, you then need to take out the dark slide. Again, this is the point to double check that the lens is closed. Take out your dark slide. So at this point, the film is now vulnerable, shall we say. Um, very careful when you're doing that not to nudge the tripod or the camera um, and I'm turning it here for demonstration purposes but if you if you were to move the camera just a little bit then of course it's gonna you're then gonna have to take the whole film out again and refocus and recompose okay um, so once that's out the image is ready to go so we're gonna as before pop the shutter and release that's an exposure done um, then going to replace the, uh, the dark slide and what we're going to do here we're going to see it's got two sides it's got a white side and a dark side I'm going to return it um, with the white side facing out so that I know that this side of the holder the, the uh, negative which is on this side has been exposed what I can then do I could uh, well what I'll then next do is take out the film holder and I then have the option of taking that away and setting up for a new shot or if I want to take the same shot again with a slightly different exposure I can just turn it over to the second negative slot that one in to make another picture
Okay, so we've now completed our picture and we're now going to do a quick pat down. So, first thing, get the film holder out, so the lever at the top, slide the film holder out and turn the lever back on. Then we need to reattach the door, so take the door, find the springy end, 90 degrees again, spring end down and fixed end up. Okay, so it's swinging properly. It's all closed. Just come round to the front. We need to take off the cable release. Okay. Uh, next, we need to remove the lens. So take it securely, hold by the front, lift that up. The lens will fall forwards and just take it out very gently. Okay, the next thing will be to take the bellows down and also to push them back, so we need to unlock it there, push them all the way back into the body. Then we're going to release these two levers here by pulling them down. Let's go on the side so that that drops down as well, and then bring it forward so that it all tucks in like so. Uh, and then leave those loose and leave those loose as well. Uh, yep, yeah. and then the next thing will be to unscrew the two side wheels as before. And the whole camera should tilt forwards and lock on. Tighten up the side wheels again. So that's done. Then the next thing will be to take it off the tripod, take the plate off the bottom.